Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. You can read the text for free online, or you can buy it, but you can go to learnpythonthehardway.org, and then click on this link, read the free HTML online, which takes you to the table of contents. In this video, we're going to be looking at exercise 18, which is names, variables, code, and functions. If you click on that, you'll go right here. Now, it's a relatively short um, exercise, but it has some extremely important information because it's about writing your own functions, which is really small programs within programs that can make your life really a lot easier once you get these down. This is the code that we're gonna be dealing with right here. And so I'm just gonna go to Text Wrangler. That's my text editor, excuse me. That's, there we go, there's Text Wrangler. You might be using Notepad++ or some other text editor, that's fine. And let's start looking at what we're gonna do. Now, we're not importing anything on this one, we're just getting started with our own code, and Zed points out that this is a lot like what we've done with argv, the argument variables, when we've been writing scripts. Here's what we need to do. A function, which is its own little program that operates within the program, you start by using def, which is for define. You, you type DEF and then a space, and then you give a name to your function. This one is going to be called print underscore two. You can call it anything you want. There's some rules I'll show you in just a second about names. And then we have in parentheses here, now this is not the best way to do it. We're gonna show you a better way in just a second. But we do define or def, and then we have the name of the function. And then in parentheses, we do this little asterisk uh, args or star args, that says we're gonna have some arguments that go into it. This is the part that's like the argument variables that we've used previously when you're gonna be providing extra information at the command line. We have two arguments that go into it and we're calling them very descriptively arg1, arg2. And then uh, what it's going to do is the function that we're calling print to is going to take two arguments, arg1 and arg2, and then it's gonna print them out this way. And that means display them in the console. It's gonna print arg1, colon, and then put in the text of whatever we put for arg1, comma, arg2, colon, the text of whatever we put. Again, this little uh, format indicator says to replace it with the stuff that we put in here. And this is the indicator for use the information in these variables. So that's, that's our first definition for a function. And it works. There's a better way to do it, however. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to make a couple things clear. The name here is arbitrary. You can call it anything you want. There are a few rules though. It's got to be one word and only letters, numbers, and underscores. And it can't start with a number. You can start with an underscore, you can start with a letter. Don't forget that it's case sensitive. If you put a capital letter in there, you better make sure you always capitalize it or the you know Python won't recognize it. Um, you also need to put a colon at the end of the first line. Do you see right here? There's a colon that indicates that we have finished this little, um, that we finished saying what the name is and referring to the arguments, and then we're getting onto the contents of the uh, function that we're creating. You put a colon there, and then everything else needs to get indented four spaces. You see how it lines up? The four spaces are meaningful in Python. In other programs, the spaces don't matter. It's kind of irrelevant, but they mean something in Python. And this is indented, and it means that these all go together as a block. Uh, when you get to the end, you go back, uh, you know, when you finish right here, you see how I went back to the first line? That's called dedenting, or just moving back. And by the way, this is called a function. This thing that we're making called print2, it's a function. And you can, you can say that you run a function, or you call it, or you use it. You'll hear all three terms. So just understand, run, call, use, all apply to functions and making them work. Okay, we're actually gonna make a shorter version of the same thing. We're gonna define a function, DEF, we're gonna, and then we're gonna call this one print to again with underscores, except this time, instead of using the star args and then putting the args down here like we're used to doing with the arg variable, we're just gonna put the names of the arguments right here. That's easy, we, so we put the definition, and then parentheses, we have the names of the arguments and we're gonna print it out and it's gonna look exactly the same when it gets printed out. So it's just one line shorter, but it's easier to follow because truthfully, I think this thing is a little awkward to read. All right, 
those two up there took two arguments, two pieces of information that you had to specify, or two variables, if you want to put it that way. This one takes just one. So you're going to stick in one piece of information, and um, it's going to be in a variable called arg1. Okay, that's fine. And then we have another one here that takes no arguments. And so this one is being called print none. And you see, it still has to have parentheses. It, it's, the function needs to have parentheses. And if you don't have any arguments, you just open and close immediately. We still have the colon right there. And we still have instructions. It says print and then print this little phrase. Zed says, I got nothing. And I just want to make one point really clear. An argument... Uh, excuse me, a function that has no argument still does something. In fact, it can be incredibly elaborate. All it means is it doesn't have any variables that the user has to supply in order to make it run. You know, you can, um, it, I think about some other programming I do, I use these functions uh, that are the most important functions I use in those ones. It's it's for doing graphics and they have no they have no arguments but they're the most important functions in the program. And so just, I don't want you to think that if it has no arguments, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's a separate issue. It just is asking whether you have to supply additional information for it to do something. Anyhow, and then what we do is at the very end here, we're gonna call all four of these functions. That means we're gonna run them or use them. So we're gonna use print two, you see, now normally we would do print and then put in parentheses, put in quotes, something that we wanna to display to the console. We don't have to do that because we're print two refers to this one up here, and this is what it does. It's going to take arg1, arg2, and stick them in here, and it's going to print this text or display this text in the console. So we have print two, and then in here we have our two arguments. Please note that they're on quotes, okay? And we have z, comma, shaw. Print two again, we have the same arguments because it's not the arguments that are different, it's just this one goes from three lines down to two lines. Print one, that's this function that we created right here, it only takes one argument. So it's just gonna print or display to the console this one little word. And print none, you don't have to specify anything at all, but you do have to have the open and close parentheses for it to work. And then it's gonna do this thing right here. Anyhow. There's not much to it. So let me just come over here. And I am in my scripts folder. I changed my working directory to that earlier. And I'm just going to type in Python, then ex18.py. And that is all that I uh, need to do here. You see, because I have the information the argument information here in the text file that I wrote in Text Wrangler. And so if I wanted it to print something other than Z, Shaw, Z, Shaw, I would change it in the program. And so these are sort of, because uh, up to this point, we've had it prompt us for things in the console. This is a little different. This is sort of hard coded into the program though we have the option of changing it in our text editor. Anyhow, that's our first use of variables. I hope that was informative and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.